Welcome back. This is the fifth video in a little space game tutorial. Uh, in the last video, number four, we looked at gravity caused by one planet or black hole object. Now what I'm going to do in this video is look what happens when you have a second planet or object in there, right? Um, my ship should have crashed there, but you can see it is at least uh, doing the basics here. Two planets are pulling on my ship, and then you have to navigate, right? And you can set all the settings and numbers to make it pull as hard or as little as you want. Okay, so how do we get this working? Well, there's two ways. I can either have the planet pull in on the player and get every planet to pull in the player, or I can get the player to uh, do the code and get pulled in by the planets. I'm going to do it from the planet's perspective this time. I'm going to show you both codes, though, either way. So here we go. Here's my planet, and uh, I was, let me just go to my player. Here's the code we had last day was down here. Okay, so this was one planet code. Okay, previous single planet gravity. And you saw we did stuff like find the distance, get the direction, our little gravity equation here, and then add motion. So that's really the key, right? Add motion to the player in the direction of the planet. What I want to do is I want to have every planet do this to the player. So let's hop to the planet. Go to create. I put one extra variable here. Every planet has a variable called planet gravity. It's set to 1. This is so if you do make planets, you could have some planets like have double gravity, single gravity, 1.5 gravity, you know, go to the moon, 0.3 gravity. So I'll just leave it at 1 for default, and you'll see this variable pop up in a sec. So in the step event, I'm basically going to find out, remember, this is the planet step event, right? Every planet's running this code. Very similar idea. I've changed some of the variables, so if you didn't watch the single gravity video, you should watch that one if none of this makes sense. But nice, simple idea. Find the distance of the player with point distance, right, from the planet. If they're too close, I sort of clamp the player distance to 100. I don't want to get too close or the gravity pull can be so much, it just rips the player in, there's no escape. I find the direction towards the planet. So be careful here, this is the planet pulling the player in. So point direction from the player position to this planet's xy, right? So it's not the usual xy comma something else. It's from the player to the planet. Then I use that same equation I did before. I've just changed my power factor here to 1.6. And then I calculate the pull, or sorry, that was calculating the pull of gravity here I'm adding that plant factor, right? So whatever the planet pull is, calculated to be, I can times by planet gravity. Now I set it to 1, so it's doing no change. But this way, if you times it by 2, you're going to have twice the pull. 0.3, you'll have a smaller planet, less gravity, if you want to add that in. And then the final actual change the player's motion. Take control of the player. With O player, ask them to motion add. And these were local variables, right? Declared with the VAR. So local variables still exist even though you're inside the width statement. There's the direction towards planet, right? That you found with point direction. And there's the planet pull value that we calculated with the distance and our little equation. And that's really it. Every planet's going to run this. And this is all happening inside of one single step, right? So one planet step event runs it, the next planet step event runs it, the next planet step event. So eight planets, eight motion ads have taken place to overall affect the player's uh, motion in the game. And that's really it. What can you play around with now, right? Because you saw at the beginning of the video what it looks like. If you want it to be more gravity, change this factor, right? Make it higher. If you want the gravity to only have an effect when the player's closer, make this number go up. Because the more this goes up, far away players won't have a strong planet pull. If you want the gravity not to take effect unless they're in a certain distance, maybe you can do some sort of equation here, like if, sorry, some condition, like if player distance is greater or equal to 100, or player distance is less than 400, then do the scope. And so that way you have a little control, right? Like you may find that it's hard to play the game 
when gravity from all the planets is on at all distances, right? But that's for you to sort of figure out. This was the harder stuff, right? Getting it working. So that's doing it from the planet's perspective. Just to show you, I also did it from the player's perspective, in case you wanted to code everything inside the player. Um, this is basically it right here. You can just browse it over, but you'll see the same sort of idea. All I'm doing really here is just saying, hey, every single planet, run this code. And basically, it's the code you just saw in the planet. So this works as well, right? And you can look that over. Anyways, that's multi-gravity in a nice little uh, space game. Thanks for watching. Now you have a couple pieces like firing, gravity, screen wrap. You can now uh, get a second player in there and pickups and items and bombs and shields and stuff and have fun with it. Thanks for watching.